Hey guys, welcome to Refuge Recovery, a Buddhist path to recovering from addiction by Noah Levine. We're continuing on with page 74, just having finished from the beginning. Moving on to two to six months. Meditate for 20 minutes daily. So after the beginning process, which was the previous video for the month two to six months in, you meditate for 20 minutes daily. Go to as many meetings and meditation groups as you can. Ask someone from the recovery community to mentor you and to call him or her regularly to check in about your practice of the four truths. Complete your first truth inventory and second truth inventory. Perform weekly physical practices like yoga, dance, or other exercises with mindfulness, such as gardening, I would imagine. Six to 12 months. Increase your meditation practice to 30 minutes a day and begin expanding the mindfulness practice to include forgiveness practices in your meditation for at least 15 minutes every other day until you have no more resentments. Again, uh, reference the previous video for that entitled Forgiveness Meditation. Attend a weekend retreat. That's fun. Begin making amends as part of the forgiveness process. One to five years. Begin daily meditations of 45 minutes in one sitting or split into one 30 minutes and one 15 minute sessions. After the first year of renunciation slash sobriety slash abstinence, begin practicing the four foundations of mindfulness and the heart practices of loving kindness compassion, appreciation, and equanimity. Incorporate more and more mindfulness and heart practice in daily life. Complete the amends process. Attend a seven to 10 day silent meditation retreat yearly. I'm gonna say that again. Attend a seven to 10 day silent meditation retreat yearly. After having completed a retreat, and finished your amends, begin mentoring others. Do an annual inventory on your recovery, looking at how you are currently engaging with the four truths and the eightfold path. Where are the weak links? What needs more attention and effort? Your five to 15 years plan is stay involved. Continue to practice and share your experience time and energy with the newer people. Include the forgiveness practice in your meditation for at least 15 minutes every other day until you have no more resentments. Continue to do an annual inventory on your recovery, looking on how you are currently engaging with the four truths and the eightfold path. Where are the weak links and what needs more attention and effort? 15 to life. Stay involved. Continue to practice and share your experience, time, and energy with the newer people. Include the forgiveness practice in your meditation for at least 15 minutes every other day until you have no more resentments. Continue the annual inventory on your recovery, looking for how you are currently engaging with the four truths and the eightfold path. What are the weak links? What needs more attention and effort? Moving on to chapter 11, we have... Mindfulness and meditation, now that you have the whole span of what your life could look like. I think that's really cool that they did that. Chapter 11, Mindfulness slash Meditation. We develop wisdom through practicing formal mindfulness meditation. This leads to seeing clearly and healing the root causes and, co and conditions that led to the suffering of addiction. We practice present time awareness in all aspects of our lives. We take refuge in the present. I'm going to reread that once again. That's that core paragraph meditation to help you understand what they mean by mindfulness slash meditation. We develop wisdom through practicing formal mindfulness meditation. 
This leads to seeing clearly and healing the root causes and conditions that lead to the suffering of addiction. We practice present time awareness in all aspects of our lives. We take refuge in the present. Mindfulness or present time awareness is essential to finding our way on the Eightfold Path. In fact, all the other factors of the path depend on mindfulness of the present moment. Present time awareness is the experience of knowing what is happening as it happens. Our recovery deepens on us being pre- depends our recovery depends on us being present in mind as well as in body. That is the only way to heal the wounds that led to our addictions and to change our relationship to craving and the repetitive habituations or habits. Mindfulness is defined as non-judgmental, investigative, kind, and responsive awareness. I'm going to repeat that. Mindfulness is defined as non-judgmental, investigative, kind, and responsive awareness. This sort of awareness takes intentional training of the mind. Our attention is naturally scattered, the mind constantly swinging from present to future to past to fantasy. The Buddha referred to this tendency of our mind as the monkey mind. Even for those of us who know that present time awareness is the key to recovery, getting the attention to stay in the present is a difficult practice. We are trying to train the monkey to be mindful of the present time experience of thoughts, feelings, sensations, and actions we must vigilantly, vigilantly and continually redirect the attention to the here and now. The formal training of mindfulness takes place in sitting meditation. Through redirecting the attention or awareness to the breath, body, feeling tone, and process of mind, as well as the state of mind that has arisen. Yet life demands more than just paying attention during formal meditation periods. We must have the intention to be mindful and aware during all aspects of life. Moving on to first foundation. Let me take it. Yay. How are you guys liking this book? I'm loving it. It's really making me... um, humbled and confident at the same time first foundation the body is the best place to start through redirecting the attention from the thinking mind to the felt sense of the body we begin to condition our attention to be in the here and the now this is done by returning returning our attention to the physical experience each time it wanders into thinking about the past or the future. The practice of mindfulness of the breath is especially helpful at the outset. Hey, kitty. Kitty wants to say hi. (laughs) Yeah. Where were we? The practice of mindfulness Mindfulness of the breath is especially helpful at the outset because we are always breathing. Given that the breath always happens in the present moment, we know that if we are aware of the sensations of the breath, we have successfully brought our attention into the present moment. Aww. This first level of mindfulness offers us an experience of relaxation and allows us to start to let go of identification with the thinking aspect of our mind. By learning to ignore the thinking mind and pay attention to our bodies, we can successfully intervene on the cravings, doubts, fears, and other negative mind states that could lead to relapse. 
see the mindfulness of breathing instructions on page 190. Let's take a look, see. We actually did that in the previous video, the one entitled Forgiveness Meditation began with this meditation on breathing in the body. So reference that, please. Where were we? Well, sorry about that, guys. I seem to have lost my spot. The former training of... Ooh. The Buddha referred to this tendency of our mind as the monkey mind. We read that. We must have the intention to be mindful in all aspects. We read that too, and I found the spot. Good. Okay. So, back to where we were. Pay attention to our bodies. We can successfully intervene on the cravings, doubts, fears, and other negative mind states that could lead to relapse. See the mindfulness of breathing instruction on page 190. But there is much more going on here to pay attention to than just the breath. So many sensations in our bodies, so many activities, the heart beating, internal organs processing food, skin sensations, bones, ligaments, saliva, blinking, eardrums being stimulated by sound, eyes by images, noses by smell, tongues by taste. Our bodies are full of present time information. What, I'm, what am I feeling, seeing, smelling, tasting, and thinking? Mindfulness is directed towards every aspect and activity of the body, posture, movement, emotion, everything. You can focus on the four elements of, the, of our bodies through meditation, becoming aware of the beat, excuse me, becoming aware of the heat, water, earth, and air within the process of our bodies. That's fascinating. We can focus on the four elements of our bodies through meditation, becoming aware of the heat, the water, the earth, and the air within the process of our bodies. See the mindfulness of our four elements instruction on page 197. That we definitely haven't looked at, so let's look at it together now. The four elements. As we direct mindfulness to the body, we begin to understand that all that is being experienced here in the body are the four elements. With each breath, we experience the air element. Warmth or coolness in the body directs us to the experience of the fire element. Saliva in the mouth, blinking of the eyes, and the beating of the heart are the water element. And the contact with the chair, cushion, or footstep draws our attention to the earth element. I'm going to repeat those. With each breath, we experience the air element. Warmth or coolness in the body directs us to the experience of the fire element. Saliva in the mouth, blinking of the eyes, and the beating of the heart are the water element. And the contact with the chair, cushion, or footstep draws our attention to the earth element. This body, when investigated, shows us that the skeleton is earth, and the skeleton is surrounded by water-based muscles and organs. The muscles and organs are warm. We have, na we have natural fire inside. We have natural fire inside. I like that. The muscles and organs are warm. We have natural fire inside, and the body is a porous, breathing organism. Not only is air entering and exiting through the nose and mouth, the skin itself is constantly breathing. And uh, we'll throw this little tidbit. Um, I'm a big old 007 fan, and when they did Gold, Goldfinger, I think it was, um, back in the 60s, an actress died because they covered her entire body with gold paint for those snap, you know, those great opening credits. And then I think she had a part in the, in the movie itself where she was just covered in gold and she suffocated to death. 
because it covered every single inch of her body because she was nude in gold paint. Uh, after that, they realized they had to leave like this much circle in the base of the spine so that they wouldn't die. And she was breathing, but it still suffocated. So that, that goes to show to me that's like, yeah, I guess that makes sense. I did not know that the skin, skin breathed until I heard that story. Sit in meditation and observe today. Actually, I will add one other story that happened personally to me. I had taken a microdose of something called Bufal Varius. And you inhale it. And you hold it. And then you're supposed to let it go. And breathe but during this microdose I uh, I think it was a good five minutes at least close to that where I didn't breathe I held my breath but I could feel my skin breathing and I went from that panic of not being able to breathe straight into a state of I am fully breathing through every single pore in my body it was the most exquisite, non-fearful, fascinating experience that made me feel incredibly alive and attuned to my body. Sit in meditation and observe closely all aspects of this body. Name what element you are being mindful of in each moment. See if you can find any part of the body that is not of the four elements. That's interesting. Perhaps you will speculate about the experience of thought or emotion being non-material. And although from one perspective that is true, it is through the four elements that we have a brain and heart to give rise to thoughts and emotions. So technically they are part of the four elements. This is what it, what it is like when all four elements come together in the form of a living human body. The body experiences emotions, the mind experiences thoughts, and they both experience pleasure and pain. As we pay close attention to our bodies, we begin to gain insight into the permanent nature of all the phenomena of being, thoughts, feelings, and sensations arising and passing. We can also turn, turn to a meditation on the impertinence of life in the body itself. We reflect on the inevitable death and decay of our bodies. Through death meditation, we come to accept death and learn to cherish life. The breath and the body are only the beginning of the mindfulness practice. Once we have established some level of present time awareness, and attention to the physical sensations of the body, we undertake training to bring attention to the feeling tone of the particular experience we are paying attention to. Second foundation. Every single experience has a feeling tone to it, a quality of ple pleasantness, unpleasantness, or neutrality that we can perceive when we are mindful. An awareness of, ex of the experience and its pleasant or unpleasant tone is essential if we are to progress on the path of recovery. Our habitual reaction to pleasurable experiences is to cling to them, often failing, falling into addictive patterns with pleasure. Our habitual reaction to unpleasant experiences is to resist or push them away. Clinging and aversion are the cause of most of the suffering we create for ourselves and the roots of all addiction. The second level of mindfulness then affords us awareness of the cause of addictions. Though being mindful of the experience and its feeling tone we can, through being mindful of the experience and its feeling tone, we can directly examine our inner relationship of clinging to pleasure and aversion to discomfort, which allows us to respond to it deliberately, choosing to let go of the root cause of what could become an addictive tendency or stressful suffering. 
Without intentional mindfulness at this level of experience, we have no choice but to stay stuck in the habits of aversion and clinging. This keeps us locked into creating a miserable existence, paying careful attention to the present moment and our relationship with ourselves allows us to meet the unpleasant, the neutral, and the pleasant with calm and understanding. At the heart of our recovery is a simple choice. Either we can stay addicted, clinging, craving, and avoiding, and continue to suffer, or we can begin to refrain from the substances, activities, and cl activities and clinging, practice mindfulness, and letting go, and find a deeper sense of well-being and recover. See the mindfulness of feeling tone instructions on page 199. We will look at that, and after that we will close. 199. Feeling tone. After establishing some ability to sustain attention, you can begin to investigate the feeling tone of each experience. Whether you are paying attention to the breath or sensations in the body, each experience has a feeling tone of pleasantness, unpleasantness, or neutrality. By focusing the attention a little bit more and opening your awareness to the subtle levels of pleasant and unpleasant tones of experience, you bring mindfulness to your craving for pleasure and aversion to pain. Feeling tone is the place where one gets attached or aversive. Being, begin by practicing the first two meditations. Always begin set sitting sitting meditation by focusing on the present time experience of the body. This allows the attention to settle in the here and now. As a basic guideline, 10 to 20 minutes of the breath slash body awareness is a good idea before expanding to the next level of practice. The amount of time depends on one's ability to concentrate. While sitting with awareness, focus on the body, Refine the attention to the feeling tone of the experience. Investigate and inquire into the nature of the experience you are paying attention to. Is this a pleasant feeling? Does it feel good? Or is it an uncomfortable experience? Are you resisting your present feeling? Being, bring mindfulness to the feeling itself. See for yourself how you relate to pleasure and to pain. What does your mind do when the present time experience is neutral? Are you able to hang out with the experience that have no pleasure or pain associated with them? Or does the mind get bored and seek a pleasurable or painful memory or plan? Continue training the mind in this way. Each time the attention wanders, gently return it to the present moment and continue investigating your inner relationship to the, pres to the pleasant, unpleasant, or neutral tone of each moment. When you become aware of the attachment to a pleasurable experience, attempt to let go. Release the mind slash body's grip by softening and relaxing into each moment. Experience fully the pleasure as it comes and goes. When you become aware of the aversion to an unpleasant experience, attempt to meet it with mercy and friendliness. Allow the pain or discomfort to be present and meet it with the understanding that it will pass if you just allow it to come through the mind body without trying to resist it, suppress it, or control it. Finally here, when you are meditating on neutral, on neutral phenomena, attempt to relax into the absence of suffering. Tolerate the mind's craving for pleasure and continue to enjoy the experience of just being. Learning to enjoy the absence of pleasure and pain is key on the meditative path. All right, there you go, guys. We will continue on with third foundation on page 81 of 
my page recovery. Namaste, guys. Much love.